Hi all, welcome to the VTAC series of Object Oriented Programming. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about event handling by using Swing Package. In Java, we have something known as Delegation Event Model. And this model is easier to generate events as well as to handle the generated events. In delegation event model, we have two key elements. They are sources and listeners. We know what are sources. Any component that generates an event are said to be a source. And listeners are those to which the notifications of these events are sent. We also had mentioned this point. That is, only to those listeners that are registered with the source will only get the notification of the events. So if a particular listener want, wants to handle an event, that listener must be registered with the source. And all GUI applications are event driven. That is, if we have a graphical user interface application, that application will be uh, handled or will be conducted as a, on the basis of event driven events. That is, when we click on one button, one event is generated and that event will be handled in a particular way so that something happens. So all GUI applications are event driven applications. When something happens in an application, it is actually an event object that is created. An event object in the sense, an object of the class that represents the event. And an event will be generated when we click on a button or when we select an item from a list all these actions are actually generating an event. There are different types of event classes in Java. We have seen these classes in the when we discussed about event handling by using AWT. These are some of the examples of event classes in Java. They are action event, text event, focus event, etc. And each of these events will be generated only under specific conditions. That means when we click on a button, it is the action event that is getting generated, not the text event, not the focus event. So for each of these events to occur, there will be specific conditions to be met. And an event object that gets created when an event occurs will contain all the information regarding the event that was occurred. Now we will see what Swing Layout Managers are. Layout refers to the arrangement of components within a container. We know that container is like a tray into which we can add so many other components. So when we add these components into a container, if we have multiple components, components means it can be button, it can be a text box, it can be a check box, it can be a radio button, etc. When we have multiple components within a container, how they must be arranged within the same container, that is what we mean by layout. And this process of layout managing is conducted, is done automatically by the layout managers. And so layout managers deals with the arrangement or the place in the components at a particular position within the container. And it is done automatically if we use any of the layout managers available in Swing package. If we don't use layout manager, then the default layout manager will work. So that means even if we are not using any like specific layout manager, the default layout manager will deal with the components and they will it will arrange the components in a particular order in the container. Java provides various layout managers to position the controls. Based upon the layout manager which we use in our application, the appearance of buttons, shape, and the, its shape and size, everything varies from layout manager that we use. So the list that is mentioned below represents the different layout managers available in Java. They can be border layout, floor layout, grid layout, etc. Depending upon the application we are designing, we can use any of these layout managers. As mentioned just now, the look and feel of each of the components when we use one layout manager it may be different from the other layout managers. So the look and feel of the components will vary from layout manager from one layout manager to the other. These are the examples of different layout managers. If you use border layout manager, the components will look like this. 
that means we can arrange the components towards the border of the frame that is what we mean by border layout and the borders are divided into north south west and east and uh, based upon the location of the component we can mention center layout also if it is grid layout if you are using grid layout the buttons or the components will be arranged like this this arrangement is done automatically that means if you use the grid layout class in our application the component will be placed like this if we have nine components it will be a three by three matrix if we have only four components then it will be one row of three elements and one row of one element so when we implement calculators or any applications like that we can make use of grid layout so that we don't have to place the buttons individually all those things will be handled or all those things will be taken care of this is how the components will look like when we use the flow layout manager as well as box layout manager so as you can see depending upon the layout manager we use the appearance of the components will vary and this figure shows the representation of cart layout manager and group layout manager here we have represented a program and, uh, by using we can add buttons to a frame as you can see we have imported the swing package javax.swing.star we have also imported the event package and as well as the awt package from java so only swing belongs to javax all the others are, are, are uh, under the main package named java we have extended the JFrame class that means this class test swing that we have created just now is actually a frame it's actually a JFrame because child of a JFrame is also a JFrame so test swing is a JFrame right now and we have written the constructor inside the constructor we have created two buttons see it is J button not simply button it is J button that means the button that belongs to swing package so J button BT1 and J button BT2 we have created two buttons and their text are, men are mentioned as yes and no then default close operation so that when we click on the close icon of the frame the frame will be closed then we have mentioned the layout as flow layout see we have used a layout manager flow layout here so we have used a method named set layout okay and in that we have mentioned the parameter as the new flow layout new flow layout that means we are using the flow layout manager so now when we add the components to the container here which one is the container here the class itself is the container because it's a frame a frame is a container which is capable of holding other components that is why we are saying it's a it's a container so here test swing is a class that extends the jframe so test swing is also a jframe that means test swing is a container so if you add components to this uh, frame since we are using flow layout the buttons will be arranged according to that layout manager then we have mentioned size of the frame here 400 400 that is the width and height of the entire frame then see we are using we have used the method add to add the buttons to the frame so when we use add bt1 we are actually adding the button named bt1 to this frame similarly we have added bt2 also and then we have set the visibility as true so when we set the visibility as true then we can see the frame when we execute this program and we have the main method and we have just called the constructor because all these lines of code are written inside the constructor itself so we are just calling the constructor by using new keyword because we cannot call the constructor simply it is create it is called only when we create the objects when we create the object we have to use the keyword new also so when we call a constructor like this we are actually not copying we are not storing the reference to a variable right now we are just called the constructor that means we are just creating the object but we are not storing that object in any in, in, in any reference variable so when this constructor is executed all these lines are executed creating two buttons default close operation is mentioned here we have mentioned the layout manager as flow layout and we have mentioned the size of the frame we have added those two buttons into the frame and we have mentioned the visibility as true so we can see the frame now now we will see another example in this example we are adding a text field to the frame like we did in the previous example 
we created a class named my text field it is extending j frame that means this class is the child of the parent class j frame so this class is also a frame so it is also a container we have written the constructor here we have created a text field not simply text field it is a j text field then we have mentioned the initial size of the text field that means how many characters or how, how much length will be there or must be there initially so it is mentioned as 20 so we can see a text field that is capable of handling 20 characters or 20 uh, characters at a time that means this this 20 represents this length of the text field when we uh, when the text field has to be displayed what must be the initial length of the text field that is what we have given as parameter here then we have added that text field to the frame then we have mentioned the layout as flow layout we have mentioned the default close operation what must happen when we click on the close icon of the frame then we have mentioned the size of the frame and also we have mentioned the visibility of the frame as true so when we execute this program we'll be able to see this frame and then we wrote the main method inside the main method we have called the constructor by using the new keyword so all these lines of code get executed and since the visibility is mentioned as true we'll be able to see this frame i hope both the examples are clear to you so we have discussed how to add buttons how to create button how to add into a frame how to create text field and how to add it to a frame how to create frame. we shall conclude now in this video lecture we discussed about how even events are handled in swing the events are handled by using delegation event model itself so there is no change in that we have to use the sources and even listeners to handle events we also discussed about some of the layout managers available in java and we saw some of the pictures of how the components will look like if we use say, certain flow, uh, layout managers we also discussed about two examples in which we created a frame and added buttons and text field into a frame that is all in this video lecture thank you so much